Section 7 of Favorite Fairy Tales Retold. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Favorite Fairy Tales Retold by Julia Darrow Cowles. The Six Swans from Grimm. Once upon a time there were seven children who lived alone in a great castle, hidden deep in the heart of a forest. Six of the children were boys, the seventh was a girl. Their father was the king who ruled over the country, and he loved his children dearly. But to save his own life, after the death of the queen, their mother, he was forced to marry a woman who was a witch. He knew well that she would not be kind to his children, so he placed them in the castle in the forest, and went secretly to visit them as often as he could. But after a time the witch-wife began to wonder who it was that the king went away to see. So she gave a sum of money to one of the servants, and the servant told her about the children of the king and how she could find her way to the castle in the forest. So, one day, when the king had gone out hunting, the witch wife followed the secret path through the forest, and when she came near the castle, she made a great tramping, as though a heavy man were walking. The sister, who was busy in the house, did not hear, but the six boys who were outside heard his footsteps, and, thinking that it was their father coming, ran down the path to meet him. Then the witch wife threw over each one a little white shirt, and as soon as the shirts touched them, they were changed into white swans, and they flew away to the water. Now the servant had not told how many children the king had, so the witch-wife supposed that she had changed them all into swans, and she went away home satisfied. But the king's little daughter had looked from the window of the castle, just in time to see her brothers changed into swans, and had watched them fly away. She was quite broken-hearted at the sight, and went sadly about the castle all day. But at evening she heard a fluttering of wings, and suddenly six white swans flew down to the castle and lighted before her. They blew upon one another, and their feathers were stripped off like coats, and her six brothers stood before her in their own forms. One of them spoke quickly. We can remove our coats with swan feathers and resume our own forms for only fifteen minutes, he said. But what can I do to help you? exclaimed their sister, wiping away her tears. Is there no way that I can bring you back to stay? "'The way is too difficult,' answered one of the brothers. "'But tell me,' exclaimed the girl. "'There is but one way,' replied her brother. "'For six years you must let no word of sound fall from your lips, "'and during the six years you must stitch together leaves of the starwort "'and make us six shirts. "'But it is too difficult,' he added. "'You cannot do it.' "'Then, as the fifteen minutes were spent, "'the six brothers resumed the form of swans "'and flew away from the castle. "'I will do it,' said the sister.' and then she closed fast her lips and ran away from the castle. She traveled the long distance till she came to the place where the starwort grew. Then she picked a quantity of leaves and began to sew. Day after day she spent picking the leaves of starwort and sewing them with the finest stitches possible. No word passed her lips, and she neither sang nor laughed. One day, while she was thus occupied, a prince with his retinue passed her as she worked. The prince turned back and spoke, but though the maiden smiled, she shook her head and said no word. The prince was puzzled, but no answer could he get to his questioning. Day after day he came back, for the silent maiden fascinated him, and at last he asked her to marry him. She shook her head and laid her finger on her silent lips, but she smiled as she did so, and the prince became the more determined to make her his bride. Each day he came to see her, and she began to watch for his coming and to count the hours after he had gone. Then, one day, when he again begged her to marry him, she smiled and laid her hand in his. The prince was so happy that he sent at once for a priest, and they were married, and he led her to his father's house. But though she was so happy, the wife did not speak, and each day she sewed on the shirts of starwort. But the queen, the mother of the prince, did not like the choice that he had made, and, as she was a wicked woman, she invented evil stories about his wife and told them to the prince. At last the queen convinced him that his wife was a witch, and, though he still loved her, and it almost broke his heart to do it, he was obliged to consent to the queen's plan that his wife be placed in a dungeon, and left there the remainder of her life. When he told his girl-wife this, she threw her arms about him, and tears rained down her face. But no sound passed her lips. Then they wept together, and although the prince told her that he loved her as well as ever, he said that the king and queen had determined that she must be sent to the dungeon, and he could not alter their plan. With trembling hands, the young wife gathered up the six little shirts of starwort, for she had almost completed the last one. 
only its leave remained unfinished, for the sixth year was almost past. As they led her out of the castle, there was heard a sudden rush of wings, and six beautiful swans lighted in the path before her, for at that moment the sixth year was ended. Instantly she threw over them the six shirts of starwort, and immediately the coats of feathers dropped off, and six handsome young men stood in the path, though one of them, on whom the unfinished shirt had fallen, had a swan's wing in place of an arm. Then their sister turned with a glad cry to her husband, the prince, and told him of the enchantment which the witch-wife had thrown over her brothers, and of the penance she had done to break the enchantment. Then the prince took her in his arms, and led her and her brothers back to the castle, where there was great feasting and rejoicing, and the prince loved his wife more dearly than ever. End of section 7 Recording by Esther Camus